coming to the mouth openers, one of which is the mouth props. Mouth props are very good aid in Trismus patients especially because we are using them just to help and aid in the uh, opening of uh, a trismatic patient. After giving the patient some local anesthesia so that he can withstand the force of opening at that time, we will close the mouth prop and insert this piece. This jaw is going to face the upper jaw and this one will face the lower one and then you will start opening slowly, 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 slowly until you match the maximum opening that the patient can withstand and then it will keep the mouth open for a good while until the muscles get adapted to the new position and the spasm subsides and that's what helps because this lock will keep the mouth prop open and securely open it will not close under any witch force so here i'm trying to close the jaws but they will never close because of the lock this is the mouth prop this is the bite block as you can see here it has a flat surface and two parts to accommodate the occlusal surfaces and the way you will insert it the narrow end is toward the distal side as you can see here and there is this is the wide end it's toward the mesial side so the flat surface will be towards the cheek so if i am inserting this block this way that means i am inserting it into the left side of the patient and this is the distal side if I want to insert it into the right side, I will just flip it and get it into the right side. This is facing the cheek, and then I will insert it into the jaw. Let me demonstrate the action of the bite block inside the patient's mouth. So assume this is my patient, this is his right side, and this is his left side. I will ask him to open his mouth, then I will insert the bite block in this manner for the right side and I will try to reach the posterior area so that I can work on the left side for him and this is how it will support the jaw and this is facing the cheek if I want it for the left side then it I'm working on the right side then I will insert the bite block on the left side the same manner I will push it towards the posterior teeth and it will hold the jaw for me securely. And that's how the bite block is used. Now we will talk about the tissue, the artery forceps I mean. Artery forceps is either curved or straight. The curved one have a unique name, we call it the mosquito. And both of them are coming with a lock. As you can see, I'm putting my middle finger or you can put your ring finger to open and close. I'm right-handed, so I will demonstrate for you on my right hand. This is my ring finger and it will help me to have a very, very wide range of motion. When you want to close, you will push. With your thumb, you will pull upwards and open. This is how you will use it. Artery forceps are used always, most of the time, for holding tissue during the biopsies or to hold an artery that has been accidentally cut and so that we can prevent the bleeding during this time. It will stay holding that artery until we make the microsurgery to reattach the two ends of the arteries and then we will open again after the uh, suturing had been done and the blood will flow again. So either we use the mosquito and also mosquito is very good at taking out any tissue and start to detangle that tissue from its tags and uh, underlying connective tissue. So let's say if I'm taking a tumor out, 
This is a very good choice to insert and start separating that tumor away from the tags that are around it. So this is mosquito, the curved hemostat, and this is the straight one. Needle holders, also they have the same lock. You can use them. The difference between the needle holder and the artery forceps is quite evident. As you can see here, the beaks are short in the needle holder, while the beaks are very long in the artery forceps. Looking at the inside of the needle holder, it's cross-hatched to securely hold the needle within. While in the artery forceps, it looks like a tissue forceps. It's all horizontal lines and it's more than enough to hold the tissue at that moment. It doesn't need to be cross-hatched. So these are the two differences between a needle holder and an artery forceps. As we have said and spoken earlier, needle holder is to hold the needle, needle in the sutures. Coming now to the kinds of scissors, we have, this is called the suture scissor, to cut the suture after we are done from the suturing process. And it is having a sharp tip and you have to go slowly under the suture and cut under the knot so you can securely take it out. This is the tissue scissor to cut some tissues around that you can cut with a scissor and no need here in, in this instance for the blades. Just the difference between the suture scissor and the tissue scissor is by the tip. As you can see here, the tip is not sharp it's rounded and this to cut the tissue safely without injuring any other tissue around it. Now we will come to the suture family and we have different kinds of suture. All of the information you need to know about that suture you can find it on the packet. Like here you can read about the needle information. We have here a 3 8 of a need of a circle. That's the shape of the needle the reverse cutting that means it's in the cross section uh, uh, upside down triangle so this is about the needle coming now to the suture material this one is a silk and it is a non-resorbable kind so because of it's a silk it's a natural resource and over here you have the size of the suture it's a three zeros and it is in the in the length of the suture is a 45 centimeters. So there are some informations related to the suture itself, information related to the needle. So this kind is the non-resorbable silk, which is coming from a natural resource. Over here, this one is the plain cat gut, which is a natural resorbable. Again. When we, look, when we want to read, it is absorbable, surgical suture. This is a reverse cutting. Again, it's a 3 8 of a circle. This needle is 16 mm in length, 16 millimeters. And also it's a reverse cutting since you can see the symbol of an upside down triangle. Over here we have the vicryl or the polyglycolic acid, which is a synthetic absorbable suture. And this also again is a 3 8 of a circle, reverse cutting. This is the information of the needle. And this is a 45 centimeter suture length. Nylon, or the other name is polypropylene. And this one is a four zeros. That means it's smaller in diameter. That's for the suture side. This one, the polypropylene, 
is a synthetic, non-absorbable kind of suture. And here they are saying it's monofilament. That means it's consisted of one filament. While the polyglycolic acid and the silk are polyfilament kinds of sutures. The monofilament here is 75 centimeters in length. The needle also again is 3 8 of a circle, also reverse cutting as the symbol says and as you can read and the length of the needle is a 19 millimeter. So if you just noticed there is length of the suture that comes in centimeters while the length of the needle comes in millimeters. Now coming to the hemostatic agents, starting with the bone wax. The bone wax will act as a hemostatic in a mechanical way, not a chemical. And here you can see that the bone wax looks like a candle wax exactly. And this will help to stop the bleeding that comes from the perforations of the bone. You will just hold it as is and then on the surgical side come and rub the bone with it and this will block all the small perforations from bleeding and this will stop the bleeding from the bone that's for the bone wax there is also other means of holding the blood clot in its place. This is gelatin. It's a gelatin sponge or other name gel foam. And this gelatin sponges uh, mainly will absorb the blood and will stabilize the blood in its place until the clot forms. Also, there is another kind of hemostatic agent like the collagen sponge which will act in the same manner of the gelatin sponge. Also will absorb the blood and stabilize it in one place until clot formation happens. We have iodoform. Iodoform is mainly an analgesic that will soothe the pain and also will act as a sterilizing agent along with the hemostasis. And it comes in different size, in different shapes. As here, it is a gauze. And this will be as a dressing to cover the wound or the socket. You can pull, cut a piece and put it inside the socket and immediately the iodoform will uh, come into action by soothing the pain and sterilizing the area and at the same time you have to change this dressing to avoid this you can use in this case for not changing the dressing by using the iodoform paste or in other name it is called alveogel and the alveogel if you want to see it this is the consistency of it from inside. It looks like small filaments that you can take out a piece and insert it inside the dry socket and immediately the action will happen. There will be soothing of pain and all will serve the purpose of uh, delivering iodoform into the uh, area of infection so that we can kill it so that the bacteria will be killed immediately and at the same time this will soothe the pain in the area. Now we want to talk about the irrigation system to deliver the saline into the area of bone cutting. During cutting bone you have to keep the bone all the time cool down 
or we will lose the viability of the cells that are around the bone and this will lead to bone necrosis. To avoid that, cool the bone during cutting using the bone bears. This part will go inside the saline bottle and as you can see here, it is pointed and it will go immediately into the saline bottle and this part here will come close to the motor site close to the bone bear and will drip the saline over you can control the flowability of the saline using the dial here by moving it up and down and this will control the amount of saline that will be poured into the surgical site now we'll talk about the plastic syringe also this is another way of cooling the bone by asking your assistant to hold this kind of plastic syringe and as you can see here it's blunt it, it doesn't have the pointy tip so you will not cause any injury to the tissue around and here it will be full with saline and the assistant will keep dripping the saline over the bare head thank you for watching and have a nice day i hope this video was beneficial for everyone if you have any questions please contact us thank you ah.